of the Department of Linguistics. I'm going to have a lecture on Thursday, the 1st of September, 2022. The title of my lecture is Kasehim Kasefi, to wit, polite and impolite language in the media and political landscape of our dear country called Ghana. The lecture is going to be divided into four parts. The first part will be the introduction, which will also talk about our Ghanaian cultural norms and values that we have inherited from our ancestors, from our parents, and from our elders. The second part, after the introduction, will be looking at linguistic politeness which I'm now calling communicative politeness. When we started as children, we were trained how to use language without insults. So within the impoliteness, we'll be looking at invectives. And under that, we'll be looking at what we call political invectives, how politicians insult each other. Then we also have invectives from the media, how on radio, on TV, and these days, especially on social media. And that that broad topic, impoliteness or kasafi, will be looking at invectives, as I've said, will be looking at the use of taboo words, especially religious taboo words like diabolizing people because of politics. And in the final part, which is the part four, I'll give some conclusions and recommendations as to what we can do to bring up this, the status quo, what we were enjoying before this republic, especially the fourth republic. So that's in short what we're going to be treating you to. Thank you very much. My name is Professor Kofi Ejikun of the Department of Linguistics. I'm going to have a lecture on Thursday, the 1st of September, 2022. The title of my lecture is Kasehim Kasefi, to wit, polite and impolite language in the media and political landscape of our dear country called Ghana. The lecture is going to be divided into four parts. The first part will be the introduction, which will also talk about our Ghanaian cultural norms and values that we have inherited from our ancestors, from our parents, and from our elders. The second part, after the introduction, will be looking at linguistic politeness, which I'm now calling communicative politeness. When we started as children, we were trained how to use language without insults. So within the impoliteness, we'll be looking at invectives. And under that, we'll be looking at what we call political invectives, how politicians insult each other. And then we also have invectives from the media, how on radio, on TV, and these days especially on social media. And that that broad topic, impoliteness or kasafi, will be looking at invectives, as I've said, will be looking at the use of taboo words, especially religious taboo words like diabolizing people because of politics. And in the final part, which is the part four, I'll give some conclusions and recommendations as to what we can do to bring up this the status quo, what we were enjoying before 
this republic, especially the fourth republic, so that's in short what we're going to be treating you to. Thank you very much. My name is Professor Kofi Ejikun of the Department of Linguistics. I'm going to have a lecture on Thursday, the 1st of September, 2022. The title of my lecture is Kasehim Kasefi to wit, polite and impolite language in the media and political landscape of our dear country called Ghana. The lecture is going to be divided into four parts. The first part will be the introduction, which will also talk about our Ghanaian cultural norms and values that we have inherited from our ancestors, from our parents, and from our elders. The second part, after the introduction, will be looking at linguistic politeness which I'm now calling communicative politeness. When we started as children, we were trained how to use language without insults. So within the impoliteness, we'll be looking at invectives. And under that, we'll be looking at what we call political invectives, how politicians insult each other. Then we also have invectives from the media, how on radio, on TV, and these days, especially on social media. And that that broad topic, impoliteness or kasafi, will be looking at invectives, as I've said, will be looking at the use of taboo words, especially religious taboo words like diabolizing people because of politics. And in the final part, which is the part four, I'll give some conclusions and recommendations as to what we can do to bring up this, the status quo, what we were enjoying before this republic, especially the fourth republic. So that's in short what we're going to be treating you to. Thank you very much. and gentlemen you're welcome shall we please stand as we welcome the speaker and the chair and please as they walk in kindly put your phones on silence thank you
evening. The president of the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences, past presidents of the Academy, vice presidents, fellows of the Academy, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the president and fellows of the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences, Ghana's premier learned society, I warmly welcome you all to this evening's event. It is a tradition in the academy and in most institutions to give newly elected members an opportunity to deliver inaugural lectures in their areas of expertise to their colleagues and the general public. This evening, we are privileged to have a scholar to speak to us on a very topical subject. The inaugural lecture used to be an in-house program of the academy, but because of its usefulness to our friends in academia and indeed the general public, it was made a public lecture in 1998 and has remained so since then. I would now like to introduce the chairman for this evening's event, who will take over from me and introduce the speaker. Our chairman for this evening is Professor Kofi Anidobo, fellow of the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences and former vice president of the arts section of the academy. Poet, literary scholar, educator, and cultural activist. Professor Kofi Anidobo is currently on part-time appointment as professor of literature in the English department, University of Ghana, Lagos. He was the first occupant of the Pam Nkrumah Chair in African Studies based at the Institute of African Studies, Lagos. He has been director of the Codestria African Humanities Institute program, acting director of the School of Performing Arts, and head of the Department of English, all at the University of Africa. Outside the university, Professor Aniroho has been deeply involved in various initiatives designed to promote African culture and history. Among them, Ghana Television's African Heritage Series, for which he was the main host and executive producer. Professor Aniroho is a past president of the US-based African Literature Association from 1998 to 1999, and has served on numerous boards and committees, including the University of Ghana Council, the National Commission on Culture, the National Folklore Board of Trustees, the W.E.B. Du Bois Memorial Center for Pan-African Culture Board of Directors, International Advisory Board for the Commonwealth Writers' Prize, the Board of Directors for Panafest, the Advisory Board of the Institute of Comparative Literature and Society at Columbia University, the Executive Committee of Cordesria, Dakar, Chairman of the Board of Governors for the National Film and Television Institute, NAFTI, and Foundation Chairman of the Council of the University of Health and Allied Sciences, HOPE. 
Professor Anyudohu has won many prizes for his poetry, including the Valco Fund Literary Award, the Fania Kruger Fellowship for Poetry of Social Vision, the Lansing Hughes Prize, the Davidson Nicole Prize, the BBC Arts and Africa Poetry Award, and Le Grand Prix de Poésie en Langue Nationale. Ever. <laughs> Professor Anidoho became a fellow of the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences in 2005. He is also a corresponding fellow of the Royal Society of Edinburgh and was awarded an honorary doctorate two months ago by University of Glasgow in Scotland. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our chairman, Professor Kofi Anyidoku. I'm looking around to see if we have any of our past presidents, but you can address them in absentia if they are not here. Presidents of the Academy, Vice President, present and past, fellows, distinguished, invited guests, it's a special privilege and honor for me to chair this particular inaugural lecture. I hope we understand that there are many more people with us online, so we should not think that we'll be speaking to half an auditorium. Professor Kofi Ajekum better known in public life as <laughs> Openying Hajekum, is a professor of linguistics at the University of Ghana, Legon, was acting dean of the School of Performing Arts for quite a few years until just about a year or so ago or even less. He had been a coordinator of the English Akan Science Dictionary Project, the head of the Department of Linguistics, and he holds a diploma first class from the School of Ghanaian Languages at Jumako, a teacher certificate A from Nkranza Teacher Training College. Following the completion of his BA degree in linguistics. He went on to study for an MPhil and a PhD at the University of Science, Norwegian University of Science and Technology, Trondheim. Returned in 1996, long before completing his PhD he had become a household name across the country for his exceptional competence and fluency in the use of the Akan language as an effective language for public discourse and debate from newspaper reviews on radio and TV, commentary on major issues of public interest. Professor Jekum was the first to introduce newspaper review, uh, the newspaper review program in Akan at Radio Universe, and other programs uh, followed. He was host of 
FSM and Obiaran Kabi programs on Radio Universe. And we must take note that these are pioneer initiatives, uh, which he introduced not only stop there, but trained and mentored some younger colleagues who have since then taken over from him. Professor Yakum has established himself as a scholar whose research and publication, publications constitute an important point of reference on the Akan language in particular and Ghanaian culture as a whole. With over 77 journal articles and book chapters, a number of book reviews and book, and 16 books, 16. His latest books are the Akan Kasajuni and the Akan Body of Body Parts uh, Expressions. This was a major book launched not too long ago. He wrote about five modules in linguistics for the Institute of Continuing and Distance Education Program of the University of Ghana. Professor Jekum is a recipient of many awards and, and honors for his achievements, including the University of Ghana's Best Teacher Award in 20, 2007, the National Award Companion of the Volta for contributions to public education, public education and the media. This was in 2008. The Kwame Nkrumah Genius Award for the use of mother tongue in the media and humanities, Humanitarians Award Ghana Honorary Division. That was in 2020. It was his areas of research are uh, ethnography of communication, linguistic anthropology, pragmatics, discourse analysis, language and politics, mother tongue education, social linguistics, stylistics, semantics, you can add as many as you think, can think of. On the strength of his scholarship and outstanding work as an Akan language educator and research scholar, a public intellectual with wide repute and a principal consultant on Akan Stroganian language and culture, Professor Jekun was elected as a fellow of the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences in July 2021. Professor Kofi Ajekum is married to Mrs. Abna Acha Ajekum, and they are blessed with four young, healthy, vibrant adults. I've added a few things. Two boys, two girls. Professor Ajekum. We hand over to you. And we welcome all those, those who are joining us online. I see that one strong delegation has just entered the room. We usually are blessed with a number of schools. The first one has arrived, and I think there will be one or two more joining us later. Thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are streaming this event live on all our uh, social media platforms. Thank you. Uh, uh, Abibi Groma, let's have a, a performance before the lecture. Thank you.
gas, executives, fellows, and the secretariat of gas, distinguished invited guests, the media, students, ladies, and gentlemen. I'm humbled and privileged to be given the opportunity to give my inaugural lecture after being inducted into the Fellowship of GAS in 2021. The topic of my lecture is Kasehem Kasefi in Ghanaian Media and Political Landscape. This topic has been very dear to my heart for about two decades now. Mr. Chairman, my lecture is in four parts, and they are as follows. One, introduction. Two, politeness in language. Nakanda in Kasapa, Kasehem, Ubro Kasa, Opo Kasa, and Nidi Kasa. The third part will be impolite language. In Nakanda to be Kasefin, Kasafun, Ubro Kasa. And then there will be the fourth part, which is conclusions and recommendations. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I'm starting with the introduction. And my introduction is in two sections. The first section is on Ghanaian cultural norms and values. And the second section will be on political and media discourse. I begin with the first part. Ghanaian cultural norms and values. This lecture emphasizes the use of appropriate and polite language based on our Ghanaian cultural norms and values. As we all know, Ghanaian cultural norms and values employ polite language to facilitate peace, social cohesion, stability, and these are necessary for national development. On the other hand, impolite language deviates from our rich cultural norms and values. Impoliteness is a degradation of standards of civility that underlie our rich cultural norms and values. Consequently, impolite language deprives us of the benefits of our cultural norms and values. Impolite language creates needless divisiveness, tension, ethnic, tribal, and partisan conflicts, and thereby threatens our social cohesion, national unity, and national development. We should therefore not allow the few ill-advised, uninformed, and unpatriotic political and media practitioners to destroy our cultural norms and values through the abuse and misuse of language for their own parochial interest, especially for political power and fame. We will see how Ghanaians appreciate the use of appropriate language and abhor impolite language and behavior. Ghana has been repeatedly referred to as the beacon of peace and hope, especially in sub-Saharan Africa. Yes, it is. And yes, it will be if we can stop these cultural deviants from further destroying our cherished cultural norms and values. Political and media activities in Ghana, especially in the Fourth Republic, have become increasingly acrimonious and anarchic. Politicians and media personalities must always remember that they owe their power and privilege to the society they are assaulting with Kasefi. It is in their own long-term interest to use the opportunities they have to rather promote social cohesion and peace with politeness and other appropriate forms of language. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, 
Let this suffice for the first section of my introduction. I now move to the second section of my introduction, which is political and media discourse. Language is central to sociopolitical stability, but it is also a major cause of polarization. Consequently, a robust system of ethical standards is required to guide political and media discourse in our public spaces in Ghana. Mr. Yaobuedua Yabuafu, the chairman of the National Media Commission, has given an indication of some ethical standards that are required in media practice. At a seminar in WA on the 2020 elections, he advised journalists as follows, and I'm going to quote him. Journalists are free to publish whatever they want to, but are forbidden to engage in lies. But what do we see these days? It is important for journalists to understand that it is not every truth that must be told, especially if the truth had the potential of breaching peaceful coexistence and causing harm. In political communication, language is very important since one error could create problems leading to unimaginable damage to lives and properties. There is thus the need for journalists to guard against replicating bad statements made by politicians. If you go out there and people are speaking in a language that is not decent, you have an obligation to reduce it, devoid of the poison, to help build a better society for ourselves. It is a responsibility that we must all bear. End of quote. Mr. Yabua, Mr. Yabuadu Ayabuafo's speech confirms the interface between language, media, politics, and society. This interface works well if it is grounded in the sociocultural norms and values of the nation, which is the focus of this particular lecture. Over the years, the media practitioners and politicians have constantly violated the symbiotic relation that ought to exist between language and cultural values in our public spaces. And they have done so, ladies and gentlemen, largely using impoliteness and other forms of inappropriate language. To redeem the healthy interface between language and cultural values, journalists and politicians must learn to appreciate credible evidence, truth, and objectivity. And this must emanate from character, which is humble, respectful, disposed to fairness, and always conscious of its own limitations. Politicians and media practitioners are supposed to promote the collective well-being and interest of the citizens. But what do we see? However, they must at all times remember that it is not everything that they know. I repeat that. They should not forget that it's not everything that they know. There are things that they do not know, and they must admit that. In particular, they cannot always foresee the full implications and consequences of their language and actions. It is therefore a failure in their profession if we, the consumers of their language and actions, are politically and ethnically divided tensed, stressed, fearful, and agitated. Politicians, in their blind obsession to win power, forget that their communicative conduct will negatively impact the next generation of the citizenry. That's where my fear lies. If the next generation, the youth, think that 
by insulting, you get much more reward, then it is very harmful. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, this brings me to the end of the introduction. We now move to part two of this lecture, which is on linguistic politeness. This second part is made up of the following contents. One, definition of linguistic politeness. In Akan, Kasapa, Kasahyam, Enidie Kasa, or Po Kasa, as the Kuyapims will say. Two examples of polite language in the form of apology will be the second section of this part two. The third section will do analysis of polite language, and the fourth will be a summary of communicative politeness. I start with the definition of communicative politeness. In the literature, the expressions linguistic politeness and language politeness are used interchangeably. However, in this lecture, I strongly think that linguistic politeness should be labeled communicative politeness. Because by definition, politeness implies appropriate communication with others. So if you are communicating with somebody and you don't use the appropriate communication strategies, then you'll be labeled as impolite. Hence, the scope of communicative politeness should involve the following, especially linguistic routines. They include greetings. So anybody who will meet you and recognize that you are also a human being and that you should be greeted, that person is a polite person. Sometimes people pass by us and they don't greet. It's only trees and other inanimate and inhuman that we shouldn't greet. We don't greet cars. We don't greet fine trees. But for human beings, we have to greet them. Apologies is another aspect of politeness. Thanking. There are a lot of people, no matter how well you serve them, they can't say thank you. Compliments. Address terms and honorifics as well as values such as respect and diplomacy, and then indirection. So, what is communicative politeness then? There are many definitions, however, I'm restricting myself to only one of them, which I think is the most relevant to this lecture. It is from Ait Sachiko, 1989. And the definition goes like this. Communicative politeness is the language usage associated with smooth communication. The underlying word is smooth communication. Realized through the speaker's choice of expressions to conform to the expected and or prescribed norms of speech. So by that, our communication should be tied up with our Ghanaian cultural norms and values, and then appropriate to the contextual situation in individual speech communities. We can see from the definition that polite language involves association, respect, acceptable communication that must be based on prescribed social cultural norms and values. So, Mr. Chairman, we are now going to look at two samples of polite language. Here, we are restricting ourselves to apologies for the sake of time. One from the then presidential candidate, Nana Kufuado, and the other from former president, John Dramani Mahama. I'm starting with the apology from Nana Kufuado. I'll first state the newspaper headline then the background to the apology, and then the apology itself. The title or the headline is, All Die Be Die Mantra, I'm Ready to Accept Blame, Nana Adu. Right. The background to the apology is this. Nana Adu reportedly said, All Die Be Die, 
the statement became a major talking point in newspaper headlines in the 2012 elections because it was generally perceived to incite NPP supporters to violence. And when he came back to apologize, this is what he said. Nana Kufuado reportedly said he regrets ever making the infamous all die be die comment ahead of the 2012 general elections. Conceding that the statement might have contributed to his defeat, he indicated that he would choose his words carefully if given a second chance. He also said that he is prepared to be blamed for that. And what is he talking about for the infamous all die be die mantra? According to him, even though the comments were misconstrued, he realized that they were unfortunate. Now let us listen to the apology from former President John Mahama. The background to the apology is as follows. The ex-president Mahama reportedly said, excuse me to say, Achimwe Buakwa has turned into the headquarters of Galamse in Ghana. I came here by air, and if you see how the land is being destroyed, it saddens me. Dr. Chihine and his people were not happy for being accused that Chebi is the headquarters of Galamse. So the former president had to apologize. President Mahama admits that his speech was inappropriate and asked for forgiveness. He does apologize to the Ochimayan Council over the issue of Galamse, Arden, I regret what I said. I know it has seriously worried you, the chiefs, a lot. Please forgive me. Maybe because I'm not an Akan and did not know how to speak without using apologetic expressions, that's why I said that. I did not know that I had offended you. I regret. Forgive me. I'm apologizing for my harsh words. This is an apology. Now a brief analysis of the two apologies. One of the most important ingredients of acceptable apology is sincerity. We have no way of knowing whether they were sincere, but we will give them the benefit of the doubt. Assuming they are sincere, each of the apologies meets the requirements of a standard apology. And what is a standard apology, ladies and gentlemen? In a standard apology, we make an open acknowledgement of a commission or an omission that we did something that we should not have done. In their case, they said things they shouldn't have said. Or an omission that we did something that we shouldn't have done or failed to do something that we should have done and that we want to repair. The cardinal point is that we want to repair the social damage. It means that any time you offend somebody, there's a, a social damage caused by you. And if you are apologizing, you are repairing so that you reestablish the cordial relationship between you. And uh, you also promise to refrain from repeating similar offense. And Nanado said, if given the chance, he won't say those words again. These ingredients are explicitly or implicitly present in each of the two apologies. Let me end this second part by giving a summary of communicative politeness. Politeness, when it is positive and it involves a communication between two people, will bring about the following. One, polite language is evidence of communicative competence and civility. So if you are able to use 
communicative politeness, it means you are civil, you are cultured. You know the culture of the language, I know the language too. Communicative politeness, like greetings and apology, facilitate social cohesion, peace and harmony. Number three, communicative politeness promotes social inclusiveness, thereby preventing divisiveness and ethnic and partisan conflicts. Number four, polite language is the panacea to heal social, sociopolitical wounds and an effective tool for social justice and reconciliation. The last one, number five, if we take apology, for instance, as a communicative politeness strategy, it is a mechanism that repairs specific conflicts and redeems the person's image and reputation, and then the damage caused by the impolite language. In view of the social benefits just mentioned, we cannot afford to dispense with communicative politeness. Kasapa, kasahyam, opokasa, or condone the perpetuation of communicative impoliteness because of the social cost to the fabric of our society in the medium and long term. Mr. Chairman, I've done some studies on culture and civilization, and I have observed that there's cultural progression wherever the people elaborate the use of reason and persuasion over force, violence, and insults. The reverse implies cultural stagnation or retrogression. On that note, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I now move to the part three of my lecture, which is on communicative impoliteness. In Akan, Kasafin, Kasafon, Ibro Kasa, Kasabone, and all those. Communicative impoliteness in this part, I have three sections. The first one is definition of communicative impoliteness. The second is samples of impolite communication. And the third will be a summary of the effects of communicative impoliteness. Definition of communicative impoliteness. Mr. Chairman, communicative impoliteness is generally defined as an act of expressing disrespect through communicative behaviors, such as the use of invectives, indecent language, intemperate language, hate speech, incendiary speeches, taboo offenses, innuendos, defamation, fabrication, false allegations, lying, snubbing, and other nonverbal communicative forms, among others. So anybody who involves himself or herself in the list I've just given, that person should be labeled as an impolite person. And I don't think some of us want to be given that label. As indicated in the introduction, such impolite expressions are socially divisive and productive of needless conflicts and tensions. We are now going to look at the second part, which is sample of invective impolite language, which I've labeled as kasefin ebrokasa. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, let us look at samples of communicative impoliteness. I'll concentrate on invective, which is the most widely used communicative impoliteness in this country. What is an invective? An invective is an abusive or insulting word or expression with a violent censure or reproach of the addressee. And very soon we'll be looking at some samples. 
I now draw your attention to examples of invectives. The examples are drawn from both the media and political landscapes. The mediated and mediatized political invectives are from both the traditional and social media. And we will begin from the traditional media. Sample number one. This sample was published in the now defunct newspaper, it used to be called Palava. And I picked that December 13, 2002, page three. And there was a writer with a pseudonym, Cassius Clay. And I read, this coming from the column. What they forget to remember, thanks to their inverted way of reasoning, is that not all actors condone to the stupidity of their descendants. The words are not coming from me anyway. <laughs> I'm just reading <laughs> what I picked. <laughs> he talks as if his earnest has been blocked with a log and an elephant is tapping on his balls. I hope the certificate-less mulatto is reading such tales. It will certainly go a long way to increase his reasoning power. For ethical reasons, Mr. Chairman, we need not identify the target of this invective. I therefore move to sample two. There was a scurrilous exchange between Kennedy and Japan, the MPP MP for Ascent Central, and Kofi Adams, NDC MP for Buem, on the Adum TV program, Begum. The MP was angered by Kofi Adams' comments, calling him a drug dealer. Mr. Japan dared the then ruling party, NDC, to arrest him if they had any evidence to back their claims. The MP angrily spewed insults on Mr. Adams and stated as follows. And this is where the invective lies. A poor teacher like you, if not for politics, a cheap boy like you, can't talk to me the way you are talking. Foolish man, fool. You are not even fit to be my house boy. And remember, these are two MPs. But I don't blame you. I blame the chief politics. Fool, who are you? Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, we are done with the traditional media, and we are now turning our attention to social media. So stay tuned. <laughs> so we are looking at political and mediatized invectives in social media. With the advent of online communication, a more liberal forum has been created. The contribution of social media today is enormous. And we cannot stop this modern technology and return to the pre-social media era. We don't have to. Unfortunately, the social media is now the major outlet where faceless people and media practitioners slight, humiliate, and tarnish people's reputation. Some have argued that the emergence of multiple social media platforms has caused the proliferation of impolite communication. But Mr. Chairman, I beg to differ. For me, it is rather that the multiple social media platform has exposed the degree to which our cultural norms and values have eroded. It is those who are already uncivil who abuse and misuse social media platforms. But those of us sitting here, if you are already cultured and civil, you won't go to the social media and be writing the things they are writing. So it's rather the character. So we should rather be concerned with the character of those media practitioners and politicians who abuse the social media platforms. 
But the thing about karate is that it is difficult to deal with because it is a subtle disposition with a resilience which is not easily amenable to reform. The appropriate response to the abusive and insulting character should be more robust rather than moralization, mindful that any such response will be consistent with the preservation of civil and political liberties. Here are samples of social media invectives taken from viewer comments on issues published by Ghana Web in 2021 and 2022. Unfortunately, I've been compelled, compelled to bring some of these normally unprintable expressions in their original and raw forms to show the reality of invectives in Ghanaian politics and the media and whether we should not fight them up front. Let us now look at samples of social media comments. And for lack of time, I have just six. The first one was a comment made by Nana Kufuado. And he said, disastrous Mahama must be kicked out. And the comment is as follows. I'm just reading what I picked. A foolish wee smoker. Where is your law certificate? Go clean your mucus smelling nose. One kenke, one fish, yakagbomo. Useless, hopeless, and worthless person. Or a person without any tangible achievement. Dankwa is still living in his father's stolen properties at age 73. This is too precedent, not any ordinary person on the street. There's another one, sample number two, and that is very current. I'm fully aware that things are difficult. Nana Akufuado said this. This was in August. And the Ghana Web reports, it says, President Nana Ekufuado says he's fully aware that things are difficult for Ghanaians, so he's working to lift them out of the challenges sooner or later. Things are not at all where we would like them to be as far as the economy is concerned, and I'm fully aware that these are difficult times for us. Nana Ekufuado said this. The viewer's comment is as follows. Ugly, short man, devil, you are a fake leader. You force yourself to become president. You killed innocent Ghanaians on elections 2020 to become president. Foolish, liar, and criminal old man. This to our president. Sample number three. This was at the beginning of the E-Levy, and uh, Dambotre said, we must all sacrifice to support E-Levy for national development. And the people came with their comments. What has this man been drinking of late? <laughs> the idiot who made me not have a representative in parliament talking this rubbish. Sacrifice for who and for what purpose? I think you and your corrupt, senile, dirty chimpanzee are on drugs. Perhaps those of whom you intentionally prevented from having representatives in that parliament are not included. See the point? They insult you and they exclude themselves. He said, you are more than a swine. Unfortunately, on this same comment by Dan Boche, there's a worse one. I'm sorry I have to say it. It's not coming from me. The person said, 
Go and tell your people from Latte, Chirepon, Mente Mente, Edukrum, Asesiasu, to support your e levy Akron 4 tax. Abuaba, Kwasia. The third one I want to skip. It's too, too full for my mouth. <laughs> if you translate it into, you should be on second side, fellow. I'm compared there. Eh? So is that cut a bottle? <laughs> and the person didn't end there, he said, Corin, send me Jimmy for. Mr. Chair, let's move to sample number four. Professor Alabi said we shall resolve the economic mess when we come to power. And the viewer said, Ofri Jato, go away with your nonsense and stupidity. Were you not part of J.J. Rowling's government for 20 years? What did you do? The NDC group are evil group with inferiority complex and lack wisdom and technical know-how to the state of Ghana. What they always produce is law lawlessness and anarchy. The last part, I find it difficult to read. He said, Ofri Jato, you are needed for sacrifice to save Ghana. How can somebody just go and sit down and write something like this? Sample number five. I have only six samples. So this last but one. The hardening is Ghana is nowhere near broke despite challenges. And this came from the director of ISE, our own friend, Professor Peter Corte, who is also a fellow of this house. The person said, any idiot can call himself a professor in Africa when all they can do is to write shit. <laughs> Unfortunately, I have my fellow professors here, <laughs> and I'm wondering what we are writing. <laughs> and the person continues, I respect a hawker on the street selling and managing his life than foolish people who call themselves economic doctors, economic PhDs, and economic professors. Is my nephew Bob Watton here? <laughs> now the last one, which is a direct invective. Yeah. The herding, stop focusing on power and govern. Opener Jekum rebukes NPP. I, I thought they were spending so much time as to who should be the president and who should be. So I said, no, they should stop that and govern. And this is what I got. <laughs> Foolish tribal sycophant Opener Jekum. Since when did you realize the poor, bad, reckless, and continue to eat breakfast as Peace FM with that watermelon head. <laughs> I was just trying to check whether my head was. <laughs> so. Continue to eat breakfast at Peace FM with that water melon head. Aided by the beast Kwame Sifakai. Is Kwame around? Kwame. <laughs> Aided by Kwame Sifakai, who has sold his conscience to the Achim Sakawa mafias. Time alone will tell O Tong. Opener Dekum, enjoy your breakfast at Peace FMO. Tone, enjoy. 
So this and the samples that I, I had a lot of them, but for the sake of time. But there are some apprehensions to all these. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, let us sum up with some publicly expressed apprehensions on impolite communication. And I will limit myself to three distinct apprehensions. The first one came from Media Foundation of West Africa. And uh, it was tagged, watching the watchdog, indecent campaign language used on radio during 2016 elections. As the presidential and parliamentary candidates mount campaign platforms countrywide, Intemperate expressions or words and smear campaigns are rife. Some of the words which form the 2016 and 2020 elections, the lesser contents of insults by some of the key political actors include thieves, stupidity, sakawa, corrupt. These are among other unprintable words. These were very wild and um, unsubstantiated allegations by politicians against each other in the bid to score political points. Some put on veil of anonymity and practically insult very respectable key political actors they know little or nothing about. So they know I am Kwasampeni, but they don't know me very well. Now, another one from Godwin Osu from Pong. And uh, he said, insult in Ghanaian politics has become the other of the day. People are not qualified to become active politicians if their tongues are not sharp enough to verbally attack their opponents. Those who are oriented to discussing and interrogating issues and policies are gradually fading off the political terrain, making way for those who can insult and attack their opponents. Surprisingly, divisive and life-threatening comments that are uttered by these politicians are mostly endorsed by a cross-section of the media, particularly the radio and television across the country. Now, the third and final apprehension, this came from the late Dasebre Professor Utibuatin, the traditional ruler and leader of the new Jaben traditional area, may his soul rest in perfect peace. He said, Ghanaian values demand that respect was given to all manner of people, especially the elderly and those in authority, irrespective of which side of the political divide they belong to. It is therefore unfortunate that we are gradually losing these values in the name of politics and media. There are thousands of young people who listen to what these politicians say or do and are likely to be infected with this kind of politicking in Ghana. Let me give a brief analysis of what these appre apprehensions are. Only the cause of law can declare someone a thief. So calling a political opponent a thief without evidence that the opponent has been convicted by a court of law is wrong, insulting, and clearly casafine. So too are sakawa and stupidity. The time honored value of respect for the elderly has eroded. It is not improbable that this is partly due to the growing culture of communicative impoliteness led by media practitioners and politicians. Depending on which political divide one belongs to, the political opponents are always corrupt and thieves. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, as we have noted earlier on, there are other forms of communicative impoliteness that I mentioned, but time will not allow us to treat them in this lecture. We are now heading towards the end of my lecture, 
So we turn our attention to part four, which is the conclusion and recommendation. First, the conclusion. We have looked at communicative politeness and impoliteness in political and media discourse and have indicated their defining features, the benefits of polite discourse in facilitating national cohesion and development. We also look at the potential harm caused by impolite discourse in promoting not only needless divisiveness, tensions, and anarchy in our societies, but also the erosion and degradation of our positive cultural values on communication. I've remarked that public discourse is one area where it can be seen whether a culture is stagnant, progressive, or retrogressive. Evidence of cultural progression exists where public actors, especially politicians, find competitive pleasure in exchange of ideas and national persuasion and rational persuasion and are deeply offended by insults, defamation, and lies. There is also evidence of cultural progression where media practitioners compete for objectivity, truth, and penetrative investigation. On the other hand, there's cultural retrogression where public actors seek to win debates, elections, and other public competi competitions by violence or intimidation lethal insults, lies, and character assassination. In the past decade, Mr. Chairman, Ghana has been trending when it comes to the use of impolite discourse in our polite spaces. We cannot continue to merely hope that this trend will not have a Rwandan effect. We need to act to eliminate or at least mitigate it for that reason, Mr. Chairman, I propose four complementary recommendations, namely ethical, administrative, academic, and policy recommendations. These recommendations are based on the assumption that condemning politicians and media houses for using or condoning the use of impolite language may be a good thing but it is certainly not enough. We need more robust, concrete, and preventative measures, not just moralization. So I begin with the first recommendation, which is ethical. Media practitioners and politicians should commit themselves to polite communication as a professional standard to be upheld at all times. That way, they can seek what they desire with decency and indignity. Recommendation number two, administrative recommendation. In-house or staff development programs of media houses, political parties, civil society organizations, and such other institutions must include courses workshops or seminars. These programs will inform, train, and educate staff on the interface between culture, public discourse, and nation building. They should be based on the social and developmental values of polite and appropriate communication and on the potential dangers of impolite and inappropriate language. Recommendation number three, that is academic recommendation. Institutes, schools, and departments which offer academic programs in mass communication should create courses in communicative politeness, grounded in the positive values of our Ghanaian culture and values. The Ghana Institute of Journalism, for instance, has a course title communication ethics, but unfortunately the contents say nothing about communicative politeness. 
Now my final recommendation, which is policy recommendation. In proposing a recommendation for policy development, Article 21.1a of the 1992 Constitution provides that, and I'm quoting, persons shall have the right to freedom of speech and expressions, which shall include freedom of the press and other media. End of that article. But Mr. Chairman, as far as I know, there's no jurisdiction in the world where the right of freedom of speech and expression is a license to abuse, insult, and defame others. After all, you see Abuebia and Chnabuebia, and yes, Abuebim Fa Abuebia Num and Koye Nego Prama. I'm not a lawyer, let alone a constitutional expert. But if my understanding of Article 21A 21.1a is reasonable or correct, then it leaves room for the formulation of policy on polite communication, especially for media practice, which will not violate the right of freedom of speech and expression. Such a policy can drive positive changes in the oversight of media practice and institutions, which train in communications. For example, Ghana Tertiary Education Commission, GTEC, could make it, could make a course in communicative politeness a requirement for accrediting media and communication schools and institutions in Ghana. And the Ghana Media Commission should proactively create a code of communicative standards for the guidance of media houses and practitioners as they have done with Ghanaian language broadcasting. Finally, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, let us remember that language has some intrinsic power to make and unmake, not only for our sake, but also for the sake of posterity, for our survival and well-being let us choose the positive side, which is communicative politeness. Kasafiam, kasapa, ubuo kasa, enidie kasa, no kwasem. And throw away or condemn communicative impoliteness. Kasafi, ubuo kasa, kasafon, nkontompo, and atro. Thank you and God bless you all. Now, Mr. Chairman, before I take my seat, permit me to do just a short acknowledgement. If I'm permitted, I can start. Thank you, sir. Many thanks to the Almighty God for bringing me this far. I also acknowledge the training and education I have received from all my teachers and lecturers. I want to thank Professor Kofi Adindoho who is chairing this function. <laughs> one in those days that we had FUE part one and part two, he was my part one lecturer in oral literature. Yes. Uh, he together with Professor Yanka, they were co-teaching. He's also the one who encouraged me to apply to be a member of the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences and mostly guided me. So, Prof, I say, ape, ape, ka, 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 ka. <laughs> My old friend, Professor Kofi Aka, whom I call my small boy, he also helped by editing and giving constructive criticisms to the drafts. And then Dr. Rachel Thompson, who assisted with the slides. I want to thank all my sponsors, namely Despite Media, Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic, Just Pong Company, Oman FM, 
the dean and members of the School of Languages, and the dean and members of the School of Performing Arts, especially Abibi Groma, who are here to perform. Finally, I cannot leave my nuclear and extended family, starting from my lovely wife, Mrs. Abner Chan Ejekum. I'm sure he's here with us. Okay, okay. And my sister Yecha, who are possibly watching far from Kumasi, far away in Kumasi. My brother Kofi Ajemai, they are all in Kumasi. And my sons and daughters, nephews and nieces, Emmanuel Asari, Simon Edu, Kwaja Dubofo Ejekum, Akwesia Kumi Ejekum, Efia Tabwachua Ejekum, and of course, my pension baby, Mafia Akumia Bunsu Ejekum. Once again, God bless you all. Thank you very much. Let me remind all of us that among the many things that we were told in his introduction was the fact that he once won the best teacher award at the University of Ghana. So this was that's kind of special lecture which does not require any summary. First of all, its structure was clearly laid out and it kept moving from one part to the very last as he announced at the beginning. And the language in which the lecture was delivered it's a learned lecture, but down to earth. Down to earth, so much down to earth that sometimes you feel like, am I still on my seat? <laughs> but we must also take note of the courage, the courage to give us live examples with names, some of us are afraid to mention. <laughs> but it's also important for us not to forget that. My name is Professor Kofi Ejikum. He was using one of the oldest techniques of language to drive his points home. When the thing is so bitter, a good teacher finds a pleasurable way of what? Driving it home. So we laughed. We have laughed very hard this evening. But we know that maybe we shouldn't have been laughing. He sneaked in an important warning that this was how he started somewhere else and eventually exploded into one of the biggest national disasters to have beset a nation in our times. This was probably how it started in Rwanda and we all know where it ended. So Thank you for this alert. That's the way I see it. It's been going on for some time and it's been getting worse and worse. This evening, he's calling on all of us. Maybe it's time we find a way of bringing it to an end. And he didn't just leave it open. 
he ended with very specific recommendations. A four-point recommendation starting with the more abstract ethical issue, then the final one where we must program it into syllabuses and hope that some sanity will return to public discourse. I thank you very much on behalf of the Academy and the Fellows and on behalf of everybody here, as well as those who are listening to us from a safe distance, a distance of technological hide and seek. I believe the Honorary Secretary will have a few announcements to make. So I'd like to invite her, Professor Helen Eater. Thank you very much, Professor Anidobo, our chair, for this evening. I would now like to acknowledge our sponsors for this lecture, and they are Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic and Peace FM, where Professor Jekum uh, is supposed to take his breakfast. <laughs> I would also like to acknowledge the schools here with us this evening. Accra College of Education and Accra Wesley Girls High School. Shall we give them a hand? <laughs> Thank you very much. I hope you have learned from the lecture how not to communicate on social media. I'd also like to acknowledge Abibi Groma. Uh, they've been here all evening with us, and they've been giving us lively performances. Thank you very much, Abibi Groma. And last, certainly not the least, I'd like to thank everyone here in the uh, auditorium and online who has been part of this evening's lecture. Thank you. There is a refreshment outside in the foyer. So when you leave here, please uh, stay and have something to eat and drink. Thank you very much. And may I now ask you to stand while the chair and the speaker uh, leave the room. Thank you very much.